Alright guys, so uh, I thought I'd put together first about 20 or so things that uh, you should do as soon as you get your brand new Google Pixel 4 or Google Pixel 4 XL. Uh, apologies if the lighting isn't uh, great, it is nighttime here and uh, I'm using as much artificial lighting as I can. So uh, <laughs> you saw that I barely got close to the phone, didn't touch the screen and uh, it sensed I was near and unlocked using face unlock very very quickly so uh, so far listen I I've been really enjoying this thing setting it up and um, <laughs> uh, I tell you what if it wasn't for some of the uh, probably Achilles heels but maybe not deal breakers so much in terms of what people have reported about battery life I haven't tested that for myself yet and of course having no wide-angle lens uh, this this would be a candidate for for one of the best phones of the year Spoiler alert, I think that that probably is going to go to one of the Samsung offerings, as it often does in recent years, often often has in recent years. But we'll see. I'm going to have uh, at least a design awards for smartphones uh, coming up near the end of the year. But uh, yeah, here we are. So I'm using the Google Pixel 4 uh, in this Oso oh Orange, which I'll tell you what, it looks more orange in pretty much every video I've seen, probably including this one as far as I can see from the viewfinder, but it is more of a coral. So it's it's not a true, true orange. It is more toward orange. So if people say it has a pinkish hue, maybe that's accurate, but it's more orange than, than pink, definitely. It, it's got a coral hue and I think it's absolutely beautiful. And I actually am more impressed with the color in person than I have been in videos. And the power button here, unless I'm colorblind, don't let people tell you that it's light pink. It's just a lighter version of this, so it's like light coral, maybe light orange. So, in any event, without further ado, let's get started here. So, uh, just FYI, when you first turn on the phone to set it up, uh, you are going to be greeted with uh, information that it is installing updates. Uh, I don't know what update or how many, but uh, as soon as you, you turn it on and you, you set up you know, your Wi-Fi and select your language, it's going to do that so but after that is all said and done the first thing that I think you should do is open up the Google Play Store and though it will probably start downloading some of your apps as soon as you sign in now I started fresh by the way with the phone so if you're starting fresh um, I do recommend that you go to my apps and games and you will see a number of uh, pending updates so I just go to update all for all of them, sometimes they're not gonna they're not gonna trigger automatically. Uh, either update all or update all is better than, than hitting them manually. And then I think the second thing that you should do is go to my apps and games and go to library. And within library, you're gonna have a list of all the apps you've ever installed under your Google account. And again, if you're starting fresh without restoring anything, just tap install next to all of the apps that you want to install. I already went ahead and did that. Just go down the list and hit install on every app that you would like to install. Second thing that I recommend is going into your settings and you can get to them any number of ways and start searching uh, uh, squeeze sensitivity. Now, squeeze sensitivity of course is for triggering the Google Assistant by just squeezing the phone. I recommend having it either at its lightest setting or second to lightest setting. Um, otherwise, you got to squeeze pretty hard, and I don't want to be squeezing the phone over time and accumulating those hard squeezes. I don't know. The build quality seems fantastic, but I think I think it suffices to just keep it at a light squeeze. So I have it all the way set down so that the, the, the squeeze is as light as possible, but I recommend going no higher than the second to lowest setting. So I have it at the, at the lowest setting, and if I squeeze... You know, I, I squeeze. It's a, it's a nice firm squeeze, and that does the trick. And by the way, the Google Assistant is unbelievably fast on this thing. Of course, because it's uh, pretty much local on the phone, it doesn't have to connect to the internet to understand what you're saying. So, after you do that, uh, I would suggest that you go to Messages. First thing you should do, and the reason I say that is because we're going to turn on dark mode here in a second. But when you turn on dark mode, it doesn't automatically turn on for messages. So I want you to tap here and click on enable dark mode. It says disable now, obviously, because, you know, it was already enabled. So 
enable dark mode. And then second thing you should do, if you want to use your text messages at uh, on your PC, on your browser, sorry, I got a phone call there. So uh, if you do want to use text messages on your browser, on your PC, uh, just tap on those three dots again and click on messages for web. And then when, uh, when you tap on that, you're gonna get a QR code once you hit that QR code scanner. And you go to this address, messages.google.com slash web. And that way you can, you can text uh, using your PC. So I recommend doing two of those things right off the bat inside the messages app. All right, next. Uh, I would suggest that we go to the display settings. So back to settings and go to display. And there's a couple things I would do first of all because we want to get this smooth display going full time. I've noticed uh, that it stays in 60 hertz most of the time, even though it's it's set to switch between 90 and 60. You don't believe me? You can uh, check out MKBHD's review, and, and he says the same thing, and I noticed it. So uh, go to smooth display and make sure that that's on. It's on here, and after you do that. Go to about phone down here. Keep tapping on that build number. A lot of you already know this. If you're watching this video, you probably know how to do this. You just you just keep tapping it until it says that you're a developer. All right. And once you are confirmed to be a developer, go back to settings, go to system, and go to developer options. So you'll see here it says force. 90 hertz refresh rate. Keep that toggled on. I know that uses a little bit more battery, but from some of the battery tests that I've watched so far, it doesn't make a big difference. So listen, one of the major reasons I got this phone or want to keep this phone is that 90 hertz refresh rate. So I recommend keeping that on to have the full smooth, you know, silky smooth, lightning fast experience. That is one of the selling points uh, of this phone. All right, next, we're going to go to battery, and I su suggest making sure that adaptive battery is on. So adaptive battery, uh, limit battery for apps that you don't use often, and this is going to get better over time, and I have suggested it for any of the Galaxy phones that people have bought, and I think it's a good idea to keep that on, especially given the limited battery, battery capacity of this phone. Next, I would go into display settings and change a number of things here. So, first of all, make sure dark theme is enabled. All right, uh, obviously if you like the white, the light backgrounds, great, you can keep that on. Uh, if you're neutral about it, then I would suggest toggling dark theme on to save some battery, to be easier on your eyes. Personal opinion, I think aesthetically speaking, it also looks superior to the light mode. So. Make sure that's toggled on. And then another thing I would suggest that you do is go to advanced screen timeout. Now, if you've owned a smartphone before, you're aware of this setting, obviously, but I'm just going to suggest to you that you put it at around one minute. It seems to be 30 seconds as a default in most phones. And I think that's a little bit short, but if you want a good balance between the screen staying on and you not having to continuously wake it and it not staying on too long and wasting battery, suggest going with one minute. Uh, next is auto rotate screen. I typically prefer it off really, but if you wanna if you want to keep it on, this has been a feature fairly recently, last couple of years in phones. If you wanna kinda use it in a tablet mode, you can do that. Otherwise, keep it off. For me personally, I like to keep it off because I don't know, I could be laying down or whatever and the phone could accidentally tilt enough for that to rotate and I think that would be a little bit annoying. Now, by default, colors here is uh, set to adaptive. I like it, I like it boosted, I, I don't know, I like, I like the colors popping a little bit. It definitely doesn't pop too much. It's mostly a very, um, very natural color-wise, but um, I would say that boosted makes a little bit of a difference. Here's the difference, I don't know if you can tell on your screen, but it's a slight difference. I prefer boosted, so I would suggest doing that. Ambient EQ, uh, apparently uh, adjust the display based on surrounding light levels. Now, I didn't notice a big difference when I played with this, so I just keep it off. That's up to you, you can keep it on or off, but I'm just suggesting that you go to the settings and set it 
the way you want uh, as soon as you set up your phone. Okay, so next thing I would suggest doing is going to storage here and just being aware of how much storage you have after you set up your phone because these phones only come at 64 gigs or 128 gigs. I got the 128 gigabyte version and I did not transfer really any data except my apps and contacts and all that stuff which downloads but uh, or syncs to my Google account but I did not transfer over any files, any music, any photos, any videos and I'm getting one 21.11 uh, gigabytes out of the box here. So I want you to be aware of this too because of that free up space button. So that periodically, I think you should go back to here, tap that free up space, and make sure you've got as much storage as possible on your brand new Pixel. Okay, now one thing that I think will definitely save you battery, no matter what phone you have really, um, is making sure to keep Wi-Fi and Bluetooth scanning off. Now, if you like this feature, fine, keep it on. I have not found any utility for it personally. So uh, I, what I did is I just, I went into settings and I started searching scanning and you see Wi-Fi and Bluetooth scanning. And I would keep both of those off. When you set the phone up, it does ask you if you want those on or off. Um, I would suggest having them off, but if you kept them on by default, as they are on by default, when you set up the phone, that's how you go in and turn those off. Again, maybe it's a personal preference thing, but it definitely will save you a little bit of battery life if you keep those off. So next thing that I would suggest that you do is, I actually forgot to tell you this when we went into battery, is to show the battery percentage. Now by default, this is off. So, I mean, you see that the battery is pretty full there, but if you're like me, you would like to know the exact percentage left, not just an approximation based on the icon. So by default, again, this is off. You go into here, tap that, and you see the battery percentage. And I think that's just uh, a lot more useful. So next thing to do back in display uh, is to set up whatever style you want and wallpaper you want. So um, I already did that. I kept mostly the default settings. I like the default font, for example, and they don't give you too many options here. You've got four options for fonts, um, and well, these are the default themes. But you got—I think you got four options for fonts. If I press that custom two, you see, there you go, one, two, three, and four. You got four options for fonts, and then you know, you pick whatever you want here. Go to next. You can pick your icons. These are the default icons. It's a little bit bolder, the first option, than these, otherwise the shape is the same. Got these, got these. So pick what you want, and then, you know, you pick your color too. There aren't too many color options. I kind of like to set the colors based on the season a little bit. I don't know, maybe that's corny. I like the blue colors in like January, February in the wintertime. I usually like orange in the fall, red around the holidays, maybe green during spring kind of a teal during summer, but um, they don't have too many options here. You don't have a color wheel to choose from, but you you know, it's nice to have the option to at least um, pick some kind of customization. So that's how you do it in there. Um, what I did was uh, basically picked the default font and the icon pack. You can even change the icon pack and make it um, change different, different shapes here. So go to next here. You can make it round, you can choose that guy, the, the squircle, or the square. So play with it, choose what you want, and then you can go to wallpaper, and in your wallpapers you have, of course, a bunch of still image uh, categories that you can choose from. I personally like the come alive options, and these move a little bit, and by default it chooses that first one up there on the top left and it's white until you turn on dark mode and it becomes darker. I chose this one, as you can see, and I don't know, I kind of like that one. So uh, next thing to check out is the home screen settings. So if you just tap and hold on your home screen and tap on home settings, uh, you've got a bunch of options here. I'd keep auto, obviously notification dots on. Uh, if there's any of these you don't like, obviously change the settings. I uh, just want to make you aware to of where you can do this. 
You can allow the home screen to rotate just like the rest of uh, the other screens you might be in in the auto rotate uh, setting. So one setting in particular to note here is add icon to home screen. If you do not want icons to automatically be added to your home screen as they download, as you're setting up your phone, uh, these all were added automatically, then turn that setting off if you'd rather just, you know, add them manually. So add icon to home screen for new apps, you can turn that off. And the uh, final thing really, the final set of settings that I would suggest playing with is in the camera. So pull that down, tap this little settings icon, and you've got a bunch of the camera settings. Now save location, I've typically kept that off on a lot of my smartphones, but if you want to use this uh, Google Pixel 4 to its full potential, including some of the new features with, within Google Photos, for example, I'd keep that on because that way when you ask the Google Assistant, for example, to show you photos of, I don't know, uh, New York City in November, you know, uh, it'll literally open up the photos you took when you were in New York in November. But if it can't save the location and have those location tags attached to them, then it won't be able to do that. Now, most of these settings I kept on. Camera sounds, that's up to you. If you want that uh, loud, those loud camera sounds, uh, then you know if you think people are more comfortable, uh, then keep those on. Otherwise, it gives you the option to turn those off. And one really cool, cool feature uh, that's, I believe, new to the Pixel 4 is social share. So you can pick up to three social apps. Uh, I'll just read, read what it says. Quickly share photos on social apps right from camera. Choose up to three apps. Social apps will be available when you open camera from the lock screen. So uh, that's, that's pretty nifty. I chose you know texting, WhatsApp, and Instagram for mine. Obviously, you can choose any three you want. And if you want to change anything else here, that's just up to preference. The gestures with your with the hard buttons here to having to do with the camera. And that's about it. I think once you uh, have set these things up, you're ready to go. And then you can change things as you go along. Uh, of course, aside from squeezing uh, to bring up the assistant, you can drag up from, oops, you can drag up from a corner and the assistant will pop up. Um, now, as a... I guess, I don't know, for lack of a better term, bonus, I would personally suggest, now this is very, very, very subjective, but I personally have downloaded SwiftKey and I would use SwiftKey over the Google Keyboard. I'll tell you why. So the Google Keyboard has some awesome features and I mean, it's a great keyboard. However, there is one Achilles heel that SwiftKey um, as an advantage still most definitely has uh, over the Google Keyboard and that is learning uh, what you type. The text prediction in SwiftKey is learned much more quickly and is much more accurate. Um, I think that part is completely objective. So whether or not you like, uh, you know, whatever keyboard you like overall, that's objective. But in terms of predictive text, SwiftKey, honestly, it's still blowing Google Keyboard out of the water. And I think Google Keyboard will very quickly make improvements with that. But um, when it comes to getting a Google Pixel phone overall, you want to keep a lot of the defaults there because it's the point of it is using Android how Google intends for it to be used or how they think what they think is ideal in terms of Android usage. But if there's one thing I would change aside from little settings, uh, it would be the default keyboard. Anyway, so I hope this helped. And uh, if you have a brand new Pixel 4, uh, I really hope you uh, enjoy using it. So far, I think it's been awesome. Obviously. Uh, battery life sucks. That might be an Achilles heel. Uh, again, I just got this phone, so I can't say for sure. I think so far, so far it's been fine. But uh, and if you're not getting a Google Pixel 4 and you just like watching tech videos, I'm right there with you. I love that stuff too. All right, oop, getting a phone call.